Right, golf mates, welcome down to another YouTube video. I am with Ian today, our course manager. And let me just say on record, he has transformed this place. But we all dread this week. We're at maintenance week. Maintenance week. Do you dread it? Yes and no. I like the actual work. I love getting on with it because it's good work. We're turning things around. It's improving the place, improving greens. But it's all dependent upon that weather. It is. And we've felt lucky this time. It's absolutely perfect for us. Golf mates, what you see behind me is an absolute lush green. Perfect, beautiful. But what's going to happen to it, Ian? What are we doing today? We are covering greens today with our Kubota and our Airco John Deere at around two inches depth. Two inches depth. Is yeah. that big cores, medium cores, small cores, just for people at home? Micro tining, micro hollow cores today. Right. And what's the procedure? We're doing that. And what else are we doing? We will be micro hollow coring yep then we're going to double scarify double scarify double scarify why is that um we'll do one pass we, we leave the cores on right we will scarify over them yep then we will scarify at a slight angle off that um taking double the amount of thatch out we're trying to produce a, a firmer surface for the members players visitors and after that what is it sand it'll be a a brush because there'll still be some um, material on the surface so we brush that in to break that up and get the good sand back into um, the profile then it'll be a cut after that a blow and a cut then it will be a sand and a drag in right so we're going to explain a little bit more into this process but we all hate this but it's very important isn't it very important and we're, in this video we're going to show you but anyway first job tractor Boring. would you want me in it first you're not going on the track there. Okay, so I'll just watch what you... Can we just have a look at the machinery? Just show us what you're doing. Of course you can. Right, Ian, so these are micro tines, are they? Yes, they are. So how do they work then? Right, we're on side eject. It's micro tines, nine and a half mil. They will push a core, they will go into the ground, push a core through the hole in the bottom, up through the tube and out through the side. And it naturally side just falls out when it comes out in the open? Yeah, they'll, they'll flick out, as you can see with some of these here. You can see that that's what that's what we're taking out that's the bit of thatch layer and um, the reason why we're having nine and a half micro tine micro hollow cores is we're not going for the big jumbo ones which are more disruptive and the golfers hate even more is because the thatch levels on the greens they're not bad really at all um what need doing yeah it's, it's a regular maintenance regular right. kind of thing we're not trying to change that profile round too much on the top um sort of two three inches there's nothing nothing wrong with that um thatch is isn't a bad bad, a bad levels at the moment so it's not not a case of we have to do anything dramatic but will this now help for going into the winter when it's wetter and stuff like that yeah of course of course it will the the thatch levels on there aren't bad so thatch thatch will come out if you if you look at some of these some of these cores liam that when the thatch is really bad you'll squeeze them and water would come out well it would hold water yeah but as we're taking that thatch out putting sand back in there's less thatch for it to hold water right. plus as we're as we're doing this it's obviously it's adding more air to this to the profile allowing the grass plant to be healthier overall so just off topic i remember yep. i've got a clip there this is a is it er 2 g2 or something like that yes you had on. yes that we're putting compressed air into the ground yeah that's that basically a big big spike down to the ground probably around 15 inches um, and as you say compressed air blowing compressed air out relieving compaction at a deeper level right. so after we've done this coring we're in um, sort of prime conditions now next month we'll be heading into the period where we're going to be deeper tining right but solid tining not not taking cores out so verti draining. So that'll be like punching the holes in. Yeah. So when's that? October, November. October, November. Potentially going through the winter every six weeks. Um, verti draining to try and get the roots penetrating down through the profile and sort of with it in our, our greens we have sort of a good top five inches of profile. Yep. And then underneath that is the sort of the native soil. So what we want to do now is push those roots down give them roads motorways pathways ah, down make it so if you make the channels the roots go down there it's follow. easier to get to of course right now i get you now i go right i'll let you get in stitch you let's uh, see what this bad boy does right 
Right, Ian, we've done the hollow tiny. Yep. What we got Chris on here now, what's happening? We're now scarifying the greens. So what does that entail? We are basically ver vertical cutting of the green. The way normally we are using a, a cylinder mower, so a cylinder against the bottom blade, which is stationary. We are now vertical cutting upwards. Right. So is that, is that brush it up and then cut it? It's basically a vertical blade, yep. which will dig into the green with brushes in between, which creates that vortex to cut the thatch that we're removing out and up. Right, get and it. And in front of the machine and get it away from the surface. So we've got Chris doing that now. Yeah. So why are we doing it twice? What's that do? Is that just help or? Yeah, one, it's getting rid of the thatch twice, twice the amount. We've gone in about five mil this time. Right. Um, you can scarify anything from minus two. So you're below the surface basically is when yeah, you're scarifying. Yeah. Um, so we're probably five mil in. So we're just hitting it twice. One, to get twice the amount out, obviously, help us create that better profile, but also helping us to clear up after all this coring that we're doing. Right, so it's actually doing two things at once. And while we're watching yeah. the lads now, obviously we're not doing it. I, I am stopping in, so I do appreciate his time. <laughs> so he's going across, scarifying at the same time it's picking up the cores. Yes, yeah. but it's also breaking up those cores because within those cores, there's the thatch that we want to get rid of. Yep. But there's also some good um, sand and soil that we want to we want to keep. That's good, good so stuff. Can I ask you a question? So go you're going to recycle some most of this? Basically, yeah. Some of that will go back into the holes that we've created, and then the holes that are still left open, we will fill with sand. Right. So what will you do with all this matter you're collecting? Then all the cores. We are collecting them, putting them in a um, a storage bay, and yep. that will be used to. We'll let that compost down, basically, because all that organic matter that's in there, that will break down. But also, as it breaks down, puts nutrients back into that soil, and that then will be spread across trees. Teas as like a top dressing and right. used as um, like a divot mix and things like that. So it's, oh, so it's also, the best divot mix you're going to get, isn't it? Well, we open so, yeah. But it, it's good for the environment, isn't it, really? We're, re as you say, recycling, but it's also saving money because we've got stuff on site that we can use. Right, golf mates, we've got Ian here. What have you got Jim going now? So we've been scarified, double scarified. Double scarified, yep. He's now brushing the rest of the material that's left on the surface into the holes, because now the thatch is, the organic matter has been taken away. Any remnants on the surface is the sand that we want to go back into the holes, recycling that, that sand, that good sand. Right, and all the brushing done. It is. We've got Jim on here now, double cutting the greens. Double cutting, two ways. So they all like diamond shape, were they? Yep. Yes, it will be. So it'll look nice and pretty. So anyone yeah. walking past the members now will think, you've not done any work on here. It's that clean of a job. I don't know if you can see on camera you know, those stripes. Yeah. And he's only done one. Yeah, the, it's a nice clean job. The, as I said before, the weather is absolutely ideal for us. Right, Ian, it's been double cut. Yep. It looks absolutely amazing. Proper diamond. Jim's done a great job there. What I am going to say is, I can't believe an hour and 15 minutes ago, yeah. it was, in my eyes, dug up. Yeah. Nightmare, golfer's nightmare. Yeah. And now it just looks phenomenal. Now, I know this is a top dressing machine. Yes, I know it is. this. I'm going to give you a little bit of information now. Go on. Who invented top dressing? Go on, you tell me. Old Tom Morris. Yep. Have you heard of him? Yes, of course. He had a wheelbarrow, St. Yep. Andrews. He, were, he wheelbarrows all the sand, what went on a green, you know, through the waves and everything. It collapsed, it fell over. So he had to brush it all up, and then he brushed the green, you know, what had the sand left on it. Yeah. And he realised that was a great surface. Were you there at the time? No, but I've read it. It's on a video. <laughs> it's either out now, it'll be out soon. Keep an eye out. <laughs> right, so talk us through this machine. Right, top dresser. We've got about a ton of sand in that hopper there. Underneath is a conveyor belt. Conveyor pulls the sand along, drops onto your spinners. Spinners. So these bad boys. That's the one. Spinners spread it out across that green. I'll, then we'll let it dry 10, 15 minutes or so. And then it's case of dragging that in. How do you drag that in then? We've got a homemade drag mat. And does it work? Yes, cracking, really? cracking bit of kit. So I can see the conveyor belt here. How much sand is needed to top dress that green? With what we've taken out, probably around a ton and a half. So we'll probably have to come back with a half load of this. Right, again. okay, brilliant. Right Ian, yep. personally yourself, you've done the top dressing. Yes. We've got Brandon here now. He's just gonna turn around with this uh, contraption. Drag mat, homemade drag mat, that. It works a tree, doesn't it? It does, look at it go, it's great. It's absolutely tremendous. Now, 
Is it just a case of putting the flag back in and that's playable? Or what's the recovery time realistically? Recovery time, seven to 10 days, two weeks maximum. Right, maximum. okay. Prior to this, we've fertilized last week to get that recovery, to get that recovery period reduced. Right. But we've got a bit of rain coming at the end of the week, which is absolutely ideal. Perfect. So, golf makes, I'm going to show you the end product. Personally, from me and the members at Chalkamari, Chol thank you very much for your hard work. That's a problem. And I know you want to thank your team, don't you? Yeah, it's I mean, like, th this is a lot of, lot of work going into each and every green, as you can see. But it can't be done without a good team. And that's myself, Chris, Paul, Brandon, and Jim. That's great. Yeah, so I think no one's important as a team. These lads are a proper team. They've come as a team and they're fantastic. Golf mates, big up to you and the team. Hope you enjoyed the video. Give us a like. More importantly, comment below. Golf is nightmare, or does it need to be done? <laughs>